You know, sort in that 26. 33. That's like me, man. You're up in the old man age. So and we're going to see what Billy Wema does with the ball here. And that should be very inspiring yeah. for those at home watching. A 33-year-old man who owns his own business, has a wife at home, and a son. He has a full-time job, a lot of responsibilities, but he's still able to qualify for events like this and compete on the highest level. Very inspiring. So Billy Wema is in the red. Warhawk is in the white for the Chiefs. And we go the strong formation, and McFadden, the former Razorback, only picks up two on first down. Very interesting to see that McFadden, though, Scott. His stats are bananas, and he looks like a lot of value for how much cap, cap he costs. And you know Weem is going to want to get him involved. He runs the ball more than any of our competitors uh, in this event. Now, RG, you played in a lot of Madden tournaments competitively. Do you like having the first game of the day? Or do you want to wait around? Is there any extra nerve to be in the to be in the opening game? Honestly, I used to like to wait. Oh wait, we got action! Fuller action! Wow, Fuller! And that's what we talked about earlier, Scott, with the speed with these players. He can go up top to Fuller, up top to Cooks, and he gets a big play touchdown against our favorite in this tournament, Warhawk. And that's huge because points are hard to come by in Madden 17. So when you can get that home run shot, it's a huge relief. Talk about the stress, getting rid of the stress. That's big for him well, right there. I was there. asking you a question, and Billy Wema just answered it. <laughs> would, would you be nervous in game number one? Billy Wema says no. I got plus two speed and Will Fuller. The, the honest answer to that question, Scott, is yeah. some players like to prolong it. Some players like to play earlier in the day. The mentality to have is it shouldn't matter. No matter what, you have to come here. You have to beat each opponent that's in front of you, and you're going to have to play games. So right. you need to be ready to compete at any time, whether you're the first game or the last game. It's the same mentality no matter what, and that's where you want your mental to be. Well, Wima told us when we were talking to him yesterday that – yeah, he, he had a few home run shots in his back pocket, and he pulls one out on the first drive. And now it's up to Warhawk to answer. Ricky Williams will rumble out to the 27, second and two. Yeah, we've got the tournament favorite versus the hometown favorite, Scott. This is the type of matchup I like to kick off with. And the cool thing about this Chiefs bracket is there's not a lot of skill difference. And when we were scouting these guys, we really felt like anybody could come out on top. Yeah, absolutely. When you look at an event like Jacksonville, you had a guy like True Boy who's in the top 10 of series points, so you know you had a blatant favorite for that tournament. None of these guys are in the top 32 for series points. So like you said, this is a wide open tournament. This eight seed could upset this one seed, and it wouldn't be that much of an upset. This is stiff competition we have right here. So 31, Ricky Williams. We'll move the chains. Warhawk look a little bit nervous after giving up that, that big touchdown to Will Fuller. And it's funny you say that because one of the advantages he felt like he had coming into this was his experience. This is the guy that made the final four of the Madden Challenge back in 2013, right. has been to many live events, has been in many big games, took a few years off, but he felt like his experience compared to the rest of the competitors was going to be a huge advantage. So it's interesting to see that he's looking a little nervous. Yeah, with that million-dollar prize pool and, of course, the 50000 in this tournament for those that can get to Burbank, That'll make you want to come back. That'll make you want to get, get serious again. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they talk about, you know, he took a two-year hiatus. Not from Madden, just from competitive Madden. From competitive no one ever Madden. takes a year off of that. <laughs> Good point. Good you can't point. go too far away. Third and five at the 35. Big play. Derek Carr, quick pop pass to, to Reed. Still on his feet, but they'll mark him at the 42, and that'll be enough for the first down. And Wima lets up that little four-yard out. But one thing that Craig Wolfley told me of the Steelers, when you, did, you saw Mel Blount on the left oh, side yeah. of that field, you could let up this three or four yard out because that's exactly what it could be is four yards and out of the game after Mel <laughs> Blount lays that hit stick on you when he comes down from that, that flat zone. So you, you got to be, if you, you could take those four yard outs, but you got to be wary of the big hit from the cornerbacks rallying down. And we saw it out in San Francisco just a couple days ago. The the big hit, the turnover, the fumble, it can really change the game. Look at downfield, and it's Brown. Oh, can't hang on. And Paul Krause got it off the tip right there. Warhawk, very lucky that wasn't the Brian Dawkins we talked about, because that would have been an interception if he had gotten his hands on that. 
but it was good timing from Warhawk. You saw him, he, did, he waited until the safety turned his back to go upfield uh, to throw that. So that was very good timing by Warhawk on that route right there. Just wasn't able to hold on to it. This time he goes to the more comfortable Antonio Brown after Tim Brown dropped that first down pass. And just like that, he's down to the 34. Two minutes to go in the quarter. Going spread right here. He's got to watch out for the blitz. He might run the ball out of this. A little bit of audible here. Moves Williams over in right yard. G. Going to go to the ground and picks up a nice six yards. Yeah, one of the tells you see in Madden a lot nowadays is when people audible and change their formation, most of the time it looks like they're looking for a run play. They don't have a lot of good passing plays when they're changing their formations. They don't set their audibles. So a lot of times that can be a tell when you see someone change their formation. They're most likely going to look to run the ball. Has time with Carr and finds Jerry Rice on the playmaker. Now he's knocking on the door of the red zone. One of the benefits of having Jerry Rice there, too, he was a little bit blanketed. Defender was right behind him, but Rice able to hold on to the ball despite the traffic on that drag route. He said it time and time again, love the Arizona playbook. There's a lot of options, especially, and you talked about it, that 11 personnel, you can really work it around. And Ricky Williams catches it out of the backfield for five. Yeah, for those watching at home, we have Warhawk running the Arizona offensive playbook and the Philly defensive playbook. Our guy Billy Wima, on the other hand, is running the Rams offensive playbook and the Bills defensive playbook. Carr hands it off to Reed, and Bud Dupree says hello at the 17-yard line. <laughs> and Bud Dupree, one of those players that is a, maybe a little bit well he's up and coming in the nfl yeah, absolutely. right now in the nfl he's an up and coming superstar but in madden he's already a superstar he's a goon star. he's a goon certified goonie third and seven car just out of the reach wow. of brown and now there's a decision to make rg i think he's gonna have to take his three points are hard to come by and that was what was nice about Weem's touchdown is he had the big play touchdown so he didn't have to deal with that adversity that is the red zone where things get extremely stingy as we saw right there on that drive. Yeah, might as well call it the dead zone because most of the time you're not ending up getting a pay dirt. That's what it feels like lately. I like that, the dead zone. <laughs> Especially in the 10. When you get in the 10 in Madden, oh my goodness. Forget it. Tough sledding. Cook springs it out of his own end zone. And Billy Wema has a four-point lead, and he's got the ball at the 24-yard line. It's a statement drive for Wema, and it's going to be interesting. He says he likes to control the clock, Scott. So we'll see if he can get that running game going in this situation. You know, some of that old-school football. We were downstairs in the Hall of Honor yesterday looking good. at all the Chiefs memorabilia and the, and the history. Well, that's a little bit about what Billy is about to do right now. Three yards and a cloud of dust. I, I didn't let he cut that back. It looked like he had a hole on the left side right there. If you're Wima, I, I, I didn't like his left stick uh, stick work right there, Scott. I, I think he had more daylight if he kept it to the left. Yeah, he flipped the counter. Yeah. And then he countered the counter. The countered the counter. <laughs> like, oh, here's the wide receiver quick. He, he told me about this, Scott. This is one of his favorite plays. Yeah, he likes to use Cooks. He says it's a guaranteed two or three yards. And he was going to pull it out. I'm surprised he pulled it out on a not a short situation that's a really good point scott when you have a play like that out of the single back uh, ace formation you want to save it for when you really need it now warhawk knows when he sees cooks in motion like that out of that formation that he has something to key on to so a big third and six to start quarter number two seven three game the man from just up the road with the lead and a great find finding mcfadden at the 37. Good play by Wima, way to hit the hot read. The blitz was coming, the pressure was there in his face, and he knew exactly where to go with it to pick up the first down. So far, so good by Wima. I'm very impressed with that. I was impressed with his roster. I'm getting impressed with his game style as well, Scott. It's, it's fun to see a little different. Little different plays. Why not throw it out on the screen? Let's be honest, it never works. Sometimes it does. Sometimes <laughs> Come on. You'll Come be on, surprised. RG. You'd Come be on. surprised. That uh, mountain, that motion halfback swing has been in a couple people's offenses the last couple of years. And when it, it, it'll sneak on a big gain every now and then. This right is not, there, loss of one, though. Yeah, this is not the Philly playbook for Madden 16. <laughs> you, can't, you can't run that, that screen game. 
second and 11 after the loss and Cooks moves it to the 39. So a big third and eight coming up for Billy Wema. And I, I think that was cool for Wema to come out in that weak twin tight and still pass the ball. Usually you don't want your opponent to get keen of any time I'm in that formation, I'm gonna run the ball and then they sell out and stop the run. So the fact that he showed him a passing look out of that formation is a smart move in my opinion. It could set him up for success later. Yeah, not a lot of room though from that left hash. Third and eight. He's gonna roll that way. Looking deep downfield. Traffic. McFadden and it's oh. picked off by Warhawk. And who else? It's the steel curtain on the back end. Mm, that's a rough one for Wema. He was moving the ball well, and Warhawk took away that crossing route over the middle of the field, but then left it. If Wema had stuck with it and kept his eyes over the middle of the field, he had a guy come open. Instead, just chucked it up down the sideline into a jump ball, and, you know, jump balls can go either way, and that situation didn't go Wema's way. The old nickel blitz, too, my friend, on first down. That's going to force a... Second and ten. You're going to see a lot of that nickel two blitz today. And that's what we talked about earlier when we said Deion Sanders coming off of the edge. Wow, good click on by Weimer right there to get on that defender and move him into position to break that pass up. You know, we're so used to seeing the high point pass there. Interesting going low. Yo, I like Weimer's intensity, Scott. Now he's he's got locked focus. in. Yeah, he's yeah. locked in. That's the type of game face you like to see. So third and ten from the 32. Warhawk trying to move the chains. And Tim Brown, after Mark Barron slipped, I, I put slipped in air quotes, that'll move the chains first down. He fell down. He <laughs> tried to press the SWAT button, which is the X button. But if you press that before the quarterback releases the ball, you're going to dive. And that's exactly what happened right there. Bad stick work right there for Lima. And Bud Dupree once again coming up with a big hit. Ricky Williams goes nowhere on first down. Nice. This is a good paced game. I, I really don't know who has all of the momentum right now. You got to kind of give it to Warhawk because he got ball second and has the ball with a chance to take the lead. But nonetheless, he hasn't done anything super impressive yet. This one still feels completely up for grabs, Scott. So second and 10 from the 48. Gets rid of it quickly. Ooh. And there's Mark Barron. He didn't fall that time. And Jerry Rice gets dispossessed, and that's going to bring up a big down. And Wema has the swaggy controller. Did you see that Xbox controller with the red little thumbprints and everything? Swaggy controller. Hey, Wima. when you're a Chiefs fan, he talked about how many times he comes to the games throughout the season. Oh, here we go. It's a big fourth down coming here we up. Here go, Scott. This is a momentum play. I call these momentum plays, Scott, because when I was talking about I don't know who has full grasp of the momentum, this is one of those plays where someone could blatantly get the momentum in their favor. Trips to the left. This feels like a PA cross time to me. Yeah, he's passing. Motion across the formation. Carr got to get rid of it. Forces it into Reed, and it's enough for the first down. A bang bang play at the marker. Wow, fortunate that Reed held on to that, though, but that's why you go and get yourself a Jordan Reed, right? Who threw that into traffic could have very well dropped that pass, but when you got a guy as good as Jordan Reed, he'll hold on to it in that situation. If it was one of those lower tier type players, probably a drop right there. And the Jimmy Grahams, the Jordan Reeds have been very popular. Of course, I, I like the I like Ladarius Green as a, as a value guy at the tight end, and on first down, picking up a nice f five yards by Ricky Williams. Look at you flying in some tips with the Ladarius Green. Hey, pick, I played huh? the game, bro. There you go. You showed me. <laughs> I, I watched the stream. Yeah, the Cole show. I'm I I'm I'm make it happen. <laughs> Let's be honest, I'm pretty bad. Second and five <laughs> from the 37. Carr Good read. finds Ricky Williams just short of the yard to gain. So they're going to have a big third and one coming up from the 32. And if you're Weeman, this is okay. He's playing his bend but don't break style of defense, making Warhawk move the ball slowly, not giving up the big play. And like we talked about, once you get into the red zone, things could get stingy. Oh, but bad stick work on the dive. And Ricky Williams will get to the 21, RG, knocking on the red zone. It's interesting. We've seen some plays with Wima where he showed amazing stick work, and then other plays where it's been really bad. Yeah, yeah not so good. He's leading by four, though. That's the 
important thing. And I think there's still some nerves out there. I, I honestly do. First live event for Billy Wima. And he admitted he was dominating kids on Xbox 360. And then he realized, oh, wait, Xbox One came out like three years ago. I better, I better switch to the technology. And that's a cool point. This is his first year playing on Xbox One, and he's already at a live event. It just shows when you put your mind to this and you understand the game of football and the game of Madden, you put the time in, and you can make things happen. And that's what Weem is doing uh, at this event. But right now, in some trouble with Warhawk moving the ball. Another thing I want to say real quick, Scott, is this might be messing with Weem's psyche a little bit. A big thing he wanted to do was control the clock. But right now, it's Warhawk's clock management that's been masterful and biblical on this drive so far. And he and fumbles, fumbles in, and Weem makes a play. Touchback, Weems. And that's Waynes. I think I called him Mark Barron earlier, but Waynes picks it up. Waynes comes through for my guy, Brandon Weems, AKA Billy Weema, and his wife, Christina, and son Riker gotta be at home getting pumped up right now, rooting on, rooting on the man because he is putting in work, and that was a huge stop for him right there because Warhawk was gonna be getting the ball at halftime and potentially gonna be going into halftime with the lead, getting the ball not where you want it to be if you're Weema, but now you got yourself right back in a good situation to have the momentum. It's worth noting, Andy Reid, the coach of the Chiefs IRL, also the coach of Billy Weema's team. So he, he's bleeding the Chiefs red here. Has a four point lead. Probably going to go back to the running game here. A little bit of a up the gut to McFadden. Think he, you call timeout here or you just let it go to the half, RG? I, I think if he's just going to let it go to the half. I think if your wean's right there, it's okay. Uh, it depends how good your swerve technique is. A lot of people like to go for that at the last uh, seconds of the game. Um, but right there, don't risk a fumble. You know, when you do that, you put yourself at risk for a sack fumble. You're in control of the game. You're the underdog. You're up. You know, just keep, you know, don't get ahead of yourself. I, I, I like the half right there by Wima, but he was very fortunate to, to get that turnover. But that's part of winning games. You got to make plays when it counts. And fortunate for him, he was able to make a play on defense. So to start the half, Warhawk will get it, trailing by four. And Ricky Williams. Oh, and nowhere. Picked up a yard. Yeah, one yard gain. But he's had some room w with Ricky. I mean, that last run, too, where he fumbled. I mean, there, there, was some, there was some room to work. So don't get discouraged if you're Warhawk. Continue to run the ball. There will be holes there. You're not going to, you know, get a big chunk every down. But it, it'll open up for you. And that is Jerry Rice hauling it in. So that'll move the ball to the 48, just shy of the 50. Warhawk trailing by four. Third time he's had the ball here, RG, only three points. Scream! Wow, Weema sending the blitz right there, getting some pressure on Warhawk. But what, War, one thing I know about Stevie Lee, AKA Warhawk, Scott, is he's going to keep it together. He, like we talked about earlier, he's been there, he's done that. And a nice and, job against the cover, too. And that's a great example of it. You take a sack, you, you know, you're thinking you're losing all this momentum, you're in an awkward situation, and then you pick up a big chunk of yardage. That's experience at its finest right there, Scott. Down at the 27. It's not fair to have Waynes and Barron on your team. The both number 26. They both have the dreads. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not fair. It's no, not fair for me. A caster's worst nightmare. <laughs> and Tim Brown can't drag the toes there on the sideline, second and ten. The challengeable play if he wants, but you know you got to be careful about what you challenge in the second half because those timeouts are precious in the second half, especially in a close game. I actually believe it was Antonio Brown. And it's fumble! A fumble! Oh, and he's got his horse! The Weems! He's at the 20, the 10, touchdown Chiefs, touchdown Wema. And was it Baron or Waynes? I have no idea. I think it was Waynes. <laughs> what you, I'm calling I, Waynes. I'm calling Baron. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's two huge fumbles 
for Wima, and that's got to be devastating if you're Warhawk. That's two possessions where you've been moving the ball quite prolifically. You're looking like there's nothing to panic about. You're keeping your composure, and then the players on your team cough it up. That's an obvious call for Madden Rage. But if you're Warhawk, you need to keep it together. You're still in this game, and you need to get points here on this drive. Even getting three will still make it a one-possession ball game. So if you're Warhawk, you got to forget about that. Go down there and get you some points. He's having some success, and he's going to bring them again. This time he finds Reed. It's really been Waynes on the right side of that defense coming from the corner back position on that blitz. And he called that he was going to do it yesterday. He's had some success so far. Good blitz pickup. Force that one in there, lucky to come up with the completion. Seven yard gain for Jordan Reed, who's already got five receptions for 47 yards. And Billy Wima is holding it down for the hometown right now. You got to remember, Scott, he is a diehard Kansas City Chiefs fan. Warhawk is actually a Packers fan. If you're a Chiefs fan, you <laughs> cannot let a Packers fan come into your house Absolutely. and take you out at the Chiefs Club Series. You need to put on for the hometown and defend your home turf. And that's what Weem has been doing a great job of so far. Already, set, already 23 attempts for Derek Carr, completing 15 of them. Yeah, he's slanging. Second and 10. And Billy Wima didn't like what he saw. He's going to take a defensive timeout. And that's smart when you're up two possessions in the second half. Usually you want to keep those timeouts in the second half. But in the situation where you're up two possessions, it's most important to get your play calling right and not give up the big play. And he throws this one away. Down to the 41. You know, I'm a big base a line guy on defense. I like to base a line. I notice Wima's not doing that. Even though he's bringing heat. He's keeping it in tight. Yeah, he's manually moving the cornerback right out there, as you see against the nub set. No longer a nub set as the wide receiver motions over there. Here he comes Strong again. Side. Throws it underneath the Brown, who gets to the 33. And now we got a fourth and uh -oh. two. Situation, Scott. A field goal would make it a one-score yeah, game. He's going to go. He like hits it. Oh, I don't like it. He oh. fights. Beast mode style. Ricky Williams says, get off of me. First down, Warhawk. Oh, my gosh, Warhawk. Good thing he could win that tackle battle, and he had that battle-ready ability on that Ricky Williams, what saved him right there, which ensures when you enter that tackle battle that it's an A-button prompt, and that's what allowed him to win. Sometimes those are, uh, the abilities can be the difference of success and no success. Right there, success for Warhawk. I know the guy at EA that worked on that. <laughs> He's a great guy. I think I know him as well. <laughs> And that is a touchdown, Warhawk. And just like that, it looked like he was stopped on fourth down. Going for two. And he's going to try to make this a field goal game. Look at this play, Scott. You got to have one. You have to have one in your back pocket. I feel like, feels like Weem is begging him to run the ball up that right side behind the guard. A lot of hot routes coming in from Derek Carr here. Two on the play clock, and I think he's just going to kick the extra point. Wow. Big answer, though, by Warhawk. And if you're Weeman, that's a, that's a little well, bit discouraging. You were up two possessions. Yeah. You had to stop on fourth down to really take all the momentum. Ricky Williams fights forward, and then Warhawk gets the touchdown shortly thereafter to make this a tight, tight ball game. Let's see how Weeman could respond on offense. Nine plays, 75 yards. That's moving. That's moving down the field. And we just got a shot of the players. Warhawk looks locked in. He's like leaning forward. He's getting into like clutch mode right now, if I'm reading his body language correctly. This is a big drive right here for Weem. So 2.14 to go in the third. Weema once again with a four-point lead in the ball. Look at the focus on those players. I love the intensity shot, Scott. It's dead serious right now. Play clock running down. Hand it to McFadden. Go. Oh my gosh. Once again, he doesn't trust that the play call he's got right tries to cut it back. Nothing there. He has lanes and he runs the ball so much more than the rest of our competitors, Scott, but he's just not able to get the ground game going. That's supposed to be one of his strengths, but to be honest, the stick work on the runs has been very underwhelming. 
So second and nine, he'll go back to the run. Once again. Well, it's okay, a little bit better right there. A little, at least he, he went in the right direction right there. And you know what? You got to stick with the run, especially for a guy like Wima. He's averaging 70 rushing yards per game. Nobody else in this tournament is averaging over 45. So he clearly depends on the run game a lot more than the rest of our but competitors. You know, when you're facing a, you know, a fire two press, you've already made it past the pressure. Just keep running to the outside. Oh, Finds oh, cuts. oh, oh cookies! Couldn't get out of his own way. Larry Fitzgerald, move! We're trying to score a touchdown. We're trying to score a touchdown, and I need it. Don't you know that Warhawk is hell? <laughs> he can lock <laughs> me up at any time. Get out of the way. If you're Weimer, that's frustrating because you didn't get the full potential of the play, but you got to be happy with the big chunk of yardage nonetheless. He loves using Brendan Cooks. Picks up a big first down. And McFadden won't go anywhere. The Billy Weemus ball carrier vision rating is just not that high right now, Scott. Not that high. But I do like that he's sticking with it. If that's part of your game plan, you have to stick with it. I think he likes to see that clock run. Goes to McFadden. Nice cut go. this time. Got to be careful with those choppy steps. That got himself into trouble. And I think his problem right there, he tried to make a quick cut but he's holding down the right trigger as he's running the ball. And for those that don't know, that's gonna make it harder to cut. Some of the best runners that we have in the Madden circuit, when they run the ball, they don't use the right trigger. They run strictly with the left stick. When you're talking about guys like True Boy, Killer Cam, my roommate Chow, these guys do not hold right trigger. They rather just use the left stick to be as elusive as possible. And you know what? Even when you only use the left stick, you could still hit your top speed. It's just gonna take longer to do so. And that turbo doesn't allow you to, to risk reward cut mechanic. back. Yeah. I get when you get the lane, pop that turbo, get going. But don't do it right away. And I, I could I guarantee you Wima was holding down the right trigger when he tried to cut right there, which ended up with those choppy steps and got his running back's uh, head taken off pretty much. The big fat and now eight carries for 20 yards. That moves the chains though. Yeah. So we're deep in the, we're just at the beginning here of the fourth quarter, deep in this game. Yeah, he's running the ball and he's sticking with it. And his statistically, Wiener does run the ball 51% of the time when he's playing on the online ladder. None of our other competitors run it more than 41% of the time. So again, he is just so dependent on this run game and I love the fact that he's sticking with it. Nine rushes for 17 yards would really discourage a lot of people but you need to stick with your game plan. Only adjust when you really desperately have to, and he's just not in that situation yet. You know, the tough thing about that play right there, the three-yard loss, now that makes it a 52-yard field goal. I think the main focus of this drive for Wima, he's trying to go up by seven. Well, I, I would be nervous for him, but he does have Justin Tucker at kicker. And, uh, he's been known <laughs> he's to, okay. to boot the ball. <laughs> he's okay. He's been known to boot the ball every now and then. So a big third down. This is it, Scott. This is going to be a big one. Look at the focus of Warhawk. Dead serious. Trying to get the ball back with 3.42 to go in the game. Third and 12. You got to watch Fuller if you're Warhawk. Fuller coming out of that slot, breaking towards the sideline. That's where a lot of people like to go on this play. Looking downfield. Little delay. Fuller was lost. Nothing there. Good he throws game. it away. He was close to stepping out of bounds there. Now it's a 52-yarder for Tucker. Great defense by the Hawk. The snap, the hold, it's up. And it is good down Main Street. We got a seven-point game with 3.22 to go. It's got to be a dream. I mean, you, you, you come to games at Arrowhead, you <laughs> live 30 minutes away. You got the lead over the number one seed with 322 to go. If I was, I um, grew up in Boston, I'm a Patriots fan. If I was in Billy Weimer's position at the New England Club Series right now, my hands would be shaking, Scott. The sweats would be real. This is for the glory. This is for a chance to represent your favorite NFL team in the first ever Club Series championship to be a part of history. And it comes down to this fourth quarter where you have a seven point lead. If there was ever a time to step up, Lima, it's right now, brother. So nothing going on first down, second and ten. 
But the, the thing is, Scott Warhawk has had two fumbles, one of them for that he gave up for a touchdown, and he's only down seven points. If you're Warhawk, you gotta be feeling good about that. Some things have not gone your way, and you're still fully into this game, and you see him get a huge chunk of yardage right there as well. So he's he knows that he, you know, he's gonna keep his poise, needs to stay comfortable, and make things happen. Look at downfield, and there is Reed catching it over the top. And he's gonna hurry up here <laughs> with laugh. three minutes to go. <laughs> they laughed that one off because they know Warhawk got away with a bad read right there. He threw right at Billy Weemer's user. And uh, unfortunately, Weeman not able to go up and get that ball. And that's really frustrating if you're him because you could have had Warhawk under a lot of pressure. Now instead, you're under a lot of pressure with Warhawk having the ball on your nine yard line. So second and six. Still can get a first down. Ball at the nine. 2.34 to go. Carr in the gun. Looking to the end zone. Ooh, bad read. This is going to be a big third and six. You know Warhawk's got his people back home watching, feeling the intensity right now. He told me to shout out his boys, Droops, Rumble, and Swizzy, all top-level Madden players that help him prepare for this event, and also his brother, Matt, who is at home watching this event. Big third down for their guy, Warhawk. To the end zone! Oh! Almost picked off by Paul Krause. When, since when does Paul Krause <laughs> drop interception, Scott? And you know what, though? Bad breaks go both ways. Steve, you know, Warhawk's got some bad breaks with yep. the fumbles, but he has gotten away with two terrible reads on this drive alone and is still living the fight another day. Biggest play of the game, Scott. This is it. And he take a sack! It'll have a turnover on downs. You got to get rid of it. The hometown hero is getting his heroics on right now. And with a couple of first down, he could knock off the one seed, Scott. Well, it is March Madness. Madness. And it's not midnight yet for the Cinderella from local. Just 30 minutes away. Oh, I love this play call. 2.20 to go. Oh, never mind. And it's a committee <laughs> meeting in the backfield. Never mind. I said I love the play call, and it got blown up. But I like the fact that he shifted the tight end to the left, got uh, Warhawk to shift his entire defense to that side, ran weak side, but it just didn't work out for him. And we're going to go to the two. Go, go, go. So with two minutes to go, we got a seven-point game. Warhawk was still all of his timeouts. Warhawk in the white. Billy Wima's in the red. And that's your man right there, the number eight seed, Billy Wima. The 33-year-old owns a construction company, like I said, a wife and a kid, and he is out here competing with the top dog Warhawk in prime position to win this game. What a legend. He'll hand it off to McFadden. He's going to lose some yards as Khalil Mack just does not give you ground. Go third and 15. So Warhawk will use his first timeout. Big third and 15. Watch left, watch left, watch left. 156 to go. If you're Warhawk, you cannot give this up. You cannot give this up if you're Warhawk. He's going to be sending heat. Deion Sanders and Willie Brown coming off the edge. Bunch to the right. Mariota. No There's no heat. As all There's day no finds. Heat. There's no heat in Spaeth for the first down. And he talked about Matt Spaeth being such a, a value at 14 cap, and he picks up 16 yards. Yeah, two people have Spaeth on their roster in this tournament. He's a value tight end that can hold on to the ball and go up and catch big jump catch, uh, big jump ball situations, because I believe he's about, what, 6'8"? He's a great seven. Six seven. He's a you know, he's a big target. One of the tallest guys in the game, and was, he didn't need the height there. That was huge. So he's gonna be able to take a minute off of this clock if he doesn't get a first down. Yeah, no timeouts left for Warhawk. 145 to go, second and four. Yeah, we should mention it's only a 30-second play clock in salary cap mode instead of the usual 40-second play clock you're used to seeing in the NFL. So it becomes a lot harder to kill the clock. Uh, in these situations. I'll be honest, if he wasn't holding turbo there, he would have scored a touchdown. Yeah. 
spinner bringing everyone yeah it's so much easier said than done though scott <laughs> it's so much i i know this and i still hold turbo every time like. <laughs> oh that's that's too good that's too good <laughs> minute 23rd and two double tied this in. is it this is the biggest play so far he could wrap it up right here everyone in the box everyone good timeout He'll use a timeout here. I like that because you know what? You get to look and see what Warhawk came out in. Get to see what his setup looks like. Maybe you have a better play to go up against that setup. Double tight end, single back under formation. Good timeout by Weimer. Smart coaching by him, in my opinion. Brings the motion, and he gives it a coach. Rory! And smart play there, knowing he doesn't need a touchdown. Falls down so he can num, 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 <laughs> eat that clock. And Billy Wema is going to upset our number one seed, Warhawk. Oh, bye, Felicia. <laughs> Talk about holding it down in your hometown, representing for your home team, and getting the hometown fans behind you. If you're in the crowd here in Kansas City, you blatantly have somebody to root for, and your guy, Billy Wema, knocking off the one seed. Cinderella has entered the ball. So winding down, Billy Wema looked a little shaky early, but his nerves calmed down, and the next thing you know, he is rocking and rolling to the semifinals. Yes, the big two touchdowns, only 17 points, but he had the big play touchdown on his first drive, and then he also had the defensive touchdown. So getting those touchdowns is important, Scott. It's hard to get those to us put up six. A lot of people get held to three, but Wema got it done. Now, I know you've had opportunities where you've, you've made it pretty far in tournaments, made it to the championship. What's it like just getting bounced in the first game? Oh, it's so painful. It's so painful, especially like a guy for Warhawk who knows he has the talent to make a run in these events, especially the Club Series Final. To know that this was most likely his last chance to make a serious run at the Madden Championship, it's got to hurt him a lot, but he has the talent. I don't think the sport's going anywhere anytime soon. We'll see him again. Well, the man that loves the Chiefs is the man that's moving on to the semifinals, and you talked about that. You talked about at the Patriots Club Series they had a guy come in, a Philly fan, an Eagles fan. Wearing coming a in. Yankees hat in so, Boston. And that's disrespect. Disrespect. Billy Wema is holding it down for the Kansas City right now. He is holding it down. The Chiefs should be very proud to have him representing, and he is putting on a show here in his home turf. Well, we will hopefully get a, a little bit of chat with him. And just as I say so, our man is ready. Pete is standing by with a winner. Thank you, Scott. I'm here with Billy Wema, the eight seed, knocking out the one seed. How are you feeling right now? Feels good. Feels real good. Now, you had back-to-back -back fumbles in this game, first to keep that 7-3 lead, then to go up 14-3. Can you just talk a little bit about how important those fumbles were for you? Uh, they were important. The first one was lucky for sure. The second one was a sack. You kind of expect that, but the first one was definitely lucky on Ricky Warren. Now, you're the only Chiefs fan in this tournament, the only player with an opportunity to represent his own team. You're going to carry some of that momentum with you into the next round? Yeah, I'm going to try. And lastly, your wife, Christine, is watching. Any message for her? Uh, I just love her. That's about it. She probably isn't watching, but hopefully she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott, back to you. All right. Well, you know, hey, we, you know, we got the... They got the loved ones at home. They they always say they're turning in. He lied to me. He told me she was watching. I called her out and everything. Christine, I hope you're tuning in. Well, he needs to get on the text right now and say, I'm moving on to the semifinals. Yeah, if she's not tuning in, she better start turning in because he can make history today here at Arrowhead if he keeps this up. Well, it's a, it's a great story. We talked about it off the when we were looking at the bracket. Any of these eight competitors can win the whole thing. Yeah, we just saw that. The eight seed just knocks off the one seed. It's a wide open tournament. That's been the theme of today, and we're going to continue to see that throughout, I believe. Also, I think the the rest of the players in the quarterfinals now say the number one seed is out. Your confidence rises just a bit more, saying you had some belief. Now you think you really can do it. Yeah, when it came to Madden pedigree, nobody was close to Warhawk. Like I said, he had a ton of live event experience. He made the final four of a Madden Challenge finals before, which is a big deal for those that, you know, don't keep up with our, our circuit or whatnot. That's not easy yeah. to do at all. 
So, uh, yeah, the, the guy with the most prestigious resume is now gone. And as a competitor, that is something that make, makes you feel good. But, hey, w Billy Weeman is nothing to be trifled with. And his roster is phenomenal. Like I said, it's one of my favorite rosters out of anyone here. Well, let's see how he did it. He's a lot of ball control, a lot of big plays. Let's take a look at these highlights starting off here in the first quarter. And it was an absolute bomb, RG, to the former Notre Dame Irishman. Will Fuller, and that really got things started for Wema. Yeah, that was a game of inches right there. He just missed the swat. Wema goes up top right here, forces it, and Blount able to make the pick for Warhawk. This is where you thought Warhawk had a lot of the momentum going into the game because he has the ball, and this was the one right here, Scott. This was the fumble that Wema said. He got lucky. He didn't use or initiate that fumble, but it saved him from going into the second half down points. Instead of going behind, he goes in with a lead. And then in the second half, this was the biggest play of the game. Sack, fumble, touchdown. Yeah, the second fumble recovery for Waynes. The man with the dreads, and this time he takes it to the crib for six. And that big fourth and six, RG, you can't take a sack there. And he does, and really just holds on to the victory from there. We talked about the running game. We talked about the ball control that Billy Wema had. It looked a little shaky. You know, maybe we threw some shade.